You'll be playing with LeBron James and Anthony Davis. They'll be playing with me. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. I made the playoffs last year. They didn't. Over his 10-year NBA career, teams with a healthy Patrick Beverly on them have never failed to make the playoffs. So will that hold up with the Lakers? Regardless of whether LA racks up a ton of W's, old rivals Pat Bev and Russell Westbrook being on the same team for 82 games will be insane to watch. But can the feisty, defensive-minded 6'1 point guard out of Arkansas legitimately reverse the fortunes of the purple and gold? If he had the impact he claimed he did on the Timberwolves, then that could very well be the case. This video breaks down the areas where Beverly brings the most value to the Lakers and predicts how far he can carry LeBron Westbrook and AD in 2023. Most people have been clowning the Lakers for giving up Taylor Horton Tucker in exchange for Patrick Beverly when they could have given up Taylor for Kyle Lowry in a separate trade back at the 2021 trade deadline. That may have been a monumentally bad decision by Rob Palenka and the GM not to go through with that deal for Lowry, but when one of the best backcourt stoppers in basketball became available, LA had no choice but to pull the trigger and give up their ever so prized possession in THT. The criticism was extremely strong for the Lakers' inconsistent evaluation of Horton Tucker, but what not enough people are talking about due to all that is the much needed toughness and extra playmaking that Patrick Beverly brings to the table. Beverly's made three all defensive teams throughout his career, which includes an all defensive first team appearance in 2017. He just turned 34 years of age, but last season in Minneapolis, it was clear the 12-year pro was still very capable at clamping up attacking guards. Beverly's 110.8 defensive rating was 7th best among all point guards in 2021-22, ironically, right behind Kyle Lowry. Beverly was the Timberwolves' second leading assist guy. He was 3rd in steals, 4th in blocks, and 5th in scoring. I guess that's what he was alluding to when he said he carried the Wolves to the playoffs last season. Of course, that was an exaggeration, as Carl Anthony Towns, Anthony Edwards, and D'Angelo Russell were driving factors to Minnesota's success. It was on Patrick to provide veteran mentorship, whereas in LA, Beverly fits in more with the core of elder statesmen. But even for vets like James Davis and Westbrook, it'll be a breath of fresh air to have Beverly's reputable voice next to them on and off the court. The passion and leadership from Patrick should rub off on the Lakers core. Here's the real reason why Beverly's an underrated fit with LA. Last season, the Lakers gave up the second most amount of points to opposing backcourt players, while over the last five seasons, Beverly's allowed the second lowest field goal percentage as the closest defender among players with 2,000 shots defended. In 2021-22, opponents shot 8.1% worse from beyond the arc when Patrick Beverly was on the floor for Minnesota. From 10 to 14 feet, Beverly held his matchup to 35.9% shooting from the field, a mark which was in the 80th percentile among all guards. He was at his very best defensively this past season, as Beverly was tied with Chicago's Lonzo Ball to rank number one among all point guards in blocks per game, racking up a total of 52 blocked shots, which was a career high by far. Whether on the perimeter, in the painted area, or in the open court, Beverly's rigorous pressure and instinctive hands make attackers pay the price for bringing the ball down or not properly protecting it. Patrick's combination of agility, flawless timing, and elite awareness allow him to pull off game-changing defensive stances. Perfectly avoiding this screen, SGA assumes Beverly's going to rotate off him, given three defenders are already there, but Pat just sneaks up behind him and takes his cookies. As the recovering help defender, watch the perfect rotation to get back and block Trey Burke's three-pointer. Here, as Brandon Ingram turns his head when he goes into a spin move, the elusive wherewithal of Bev allows him to sneak into the driving lane and rack up the steal. Lastly, unhesitantly switching onto Julius Randle, Beverly's low center of gravity proves to be nightmarish for a so-called mismatch. Mr. 94 feet of defense adds a much-needed intimidation factor to a Laker team which ranked 21st in efficiency on this end last season. What makes Beverly so elite is the man's innovative positioning, which makes up for his lack of size. He doesn't fundamentally stay directly in front of attackers, and conversely, thrives at swiping away on the side of them, which can result in him getting exposed at times, 
but it's better than just getting back down in the post and dominated like most players his size. I could watch tape on this man playing defense all day long because Beverly doesn't just steal or block the basketball, he steals or blocks the opposing team's offensive flow and confidence. Just take these two rips on two top shooting guards in Gary Trent Jr. and James Harden, the defensive precision is legitimately soul snatching. One fact that's not a great sign for the Lakers spacing on the other side of the floor is that Beverly has the highest career three point percentage of any Laker at 37.8%. That percentage though has come on 4.2 three point attempts per game, a high volume of triples for a guy who's known for his defense. Another under talked about piece of value that Pat Bev provides comes in the playmaking department his extra ball handling and passing chops will be life-saving for this Lakers team, as Beverly's 4.6 dimes per night last season would have been third on the 21-22 Lakers behind LeBron and Russ. But maybe the question you've stuck around for, how is Beverly going to get along with Brody? There's been rumors that LA could be making a second deal with Utah, this time featuring Westbrook plus the Lakers' 2027 and 2029 first round picks in exchange for several veterans on the Jazz roster of LA's choosing. But assuming that Westbrook is still a Laker by next season, I don't think starting both he and Beverly in the backcourt is the worst thing whatsoever. Just think about the 2019 double point guard assemblance of Kyle Lowry and Fred Van Vliet for my Toronto Raptors. Having two floor generals share the court who have different tempos can be very beneficial. Westbrook likes to push the pace in transition like Lowry, and Beverly likes to slow it down, set up his teammates, and hit triples like Van Vliet. I think the Lakers will see how it plays out between Westbrook and Beverly before making another move. Most people are waiting to see the highly intense personalities of Westbrook and Beverly cause chaos, but they haven't considered how the two could potentially vibe off each other and provide a solid backcourt tandem for LeBron James and Anthony Davis. The Lakers had an underrated offseason, expect LA to have a decent start to the season, and with a healthy LeBron, anything is possible if they can sneak into the postseason. Will Pat Bev help or hurt the Lakers? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out, and the top 5 commenters by September 21st earn free merchandise of their choosing. Shout out to Hamish S for saying I agree with the others saying Looney and Wiggins, however, how has 2K managed to put the guy who should have won most improved player as an 83 overall? This man just stepped up when Curry got injured and played like an absolute beast, not only for the end of the regular season, but also during the playoffs. Poole had a 76 in 2K22, which made sense as he wasn't close to his current standards, but to only push him up by 7 points after the season is straight up disrespectful. In my opinion, Wiggins needs to be at least an 88 as well and Poole should be above an 85. You tell the story in Community Speaks.